Typically when you buy the stovepipes, you normally buy them, they come with a seam that's open like this on them. Um, and if you look really carefully, you can see that it's designed to have a lip that doesn't have any sharp edges on it on either side. And one end fits in the other and they clip into each other. Um, it's a pretty cool design. What you do is you take this end and you put it in here and they don't just come this way. You actually have to bend them in on each other and slide in and then they pop out. It's probably going to be the one, one of the most annoying parts of the project, if putting these things together actually. Because right on the end right here, you can slide them in like that pretty well, but you have to work your way down the tube on it and it's a little bit of a pain. So you can see as I do that, all of the manipulation that I've had to do to put this together has made this not quite round. And so I need to go back and sort of reshape it with my hands a little bit to make sure that this really is a circle and not some sort of weird oblong or ellipse. It doesn't take much. It's the kind of thing you can pretty much eyeball, which is good. So I've got this part flared down, but it's not flared so that the parts that I bent down, I haven't bent all the way down to be 90 degrees yet. I've just kind of bent most of the way. Now I'm gonna come with a ball peen hammer and start continuing to bend those 90 and also using the ball peen hammer to start to hit on this to sort of knock that back a little bit as I expand that hole as I need it to be the right size. I'm starting to get reasonably close there. So I'm not gonna keep this crenulated part of of the, um, the stovepipe. I'm actually gonna cut off one end and I'll cut it off at a 45 degree angle. The point that I wanted to make is when you get pretty close, like as you sneak up on the, on the right size, don't push this all the way down until you're really ready to be done. Because once you push it in, it's not gonna come back out without a great deal of effort. So as you're test fitting this, don't get too carried away. Previously, I'd just been talking about putting the stovepipe in and then and cutting it at a 45 degree angle and putting it in. I'm gonna hold off on that step for a second just because I don't want that stovepipe sticking into this area. Um, and it might be in the way when I'm trying to put this back wall in for the oven. So I'm gonna do the back wall first. Um, and so the way that we do that is we're gonna take one of the lids that we ground off and we'll put it back here, we'll hold it in place, we'll drill a couple pilot holes and we'll put it in place with pop rivets. That brings me to talking about these lids for the bung holes and you just unscrew them at the top and they just have threads on them. And on all of these, right around the edge, it has a little rubber gasket um, that helps to keep it from, that helps to create a seal whenever you close it to keep oil or whatever you have in there. You wanna take that gasket out it's just a simple rubber gasket. There's nothing fancy about it. But make sure to take it out because when you get this oven up to really high temperatures, uh, that gasket's gonna melt and it's gonna cause you nasty grossness and unpleasantry. So I'm just gonna screw this right back in and, and make it snug. You know, you don't have to be crazy about it, um, but get it snug. Um, and do the same thing on this very small bunghole on the bottom. And then again, it just has a little rubber washer. You can usually get it just by grabbing it with your fingernails or a screwdriver or something like that and just peel it right out. I'm gonna put this in the oven. So, and it's basically gonna line up right about here. So the back of this lid, here's the interior surface of it. This is about five eighths of an inch thick or so, or that distance right there. Um, and the edge of this rim right here, I'm gonna line up right with the back edge of this downdraft opening that we made. Since it does have those bungs in it, you can see an, it kind of creates an orientation, an up and, up and down orientation. And I don't want those lids to look like they're cattywampus. I don't want to look in the back and just see everything look askew. So I'm trying to make sure that those are pretty much up and down. One of the things that helps me to orient on these is that you can see the seam on that barrel um, on the inside. It's a pretty nice landmark. I tend to either make that the very bottom or make it the very top. It gives you a good north, south, 12 o'clock, six, six o'clock orientation. And since I'm trying to line up these bung holes properly, I can just have this one kind of lined up with that bottom. Cool. So what I've got here is just a rubber mallet. I'm just gonna try and tap it into place a little bit with it. And I wanna use something that's not gonna dent anything, just being very, very gentle on this.
So you can see that I've started to meet that seam up on top right here. Um, I've actually come a little bit too far right there, so I'm going to have to knock the other direction. Um, but to get this oriented nicely, one of the things that I did in advance was I just got a scrap piece of wood and I cut it to be the distance between the front of the oven and the back wall of the oven. Um, and in this case, that's 18 and 7 eighths inches. And so I can just put this in the front of the oven and make sure that the front end of my stick is flush um, with this end up here. And then I know that my oven is, um, my back door is where I want it to be. You probably don't need the clamp on this necessarily, but I like to make sure that it's not going to move on me. Um, so I put a clamp in place just so when I'm drilling a pilot hole, it doesn't move around on me. I was kind of new to pop rivets when I started this game. So the way that pop rivets work is that here's your pop riveting device and there's your pop rivet. You can see it has this long shaft and this wider, thicker part right there. It basically has a single shaft that goes through it and at the tip it has a little bit of a ball at the end of the shaft. And then it basically has a cylinder right here with a flared top. You put that cylinder through a hole um, and then the tool that you use grabs onto this shaft and it pulls that shaft this direction. As it does, that ball works its way down into this cylinder and expands it a little bit. And then when it gets to the point that it won't go any far, any farther, it's reached its max, the um, shaft breaks off. Then you have a nice flush surface on that side and you don't have to do any welding. So the way that you do it is you open up the handle on your pop riveter, you put the pop rivet in, and close it into place. Take your pop rivet, slide it into the hole, and try and make sure that you've pushed your pop rivet all the way up against, flush against the surface that you're gonna be going against. You don't wanna be sort of sticking out a little bit right here, because then that'll leave that flared head sticking out and it won't work as well. So make sure you're up against everything, and then you squeeze the pop rivet. Usually takes one or two squeezes and then it breaks off. And then in your pop riveting tool, you still have that shaft that you, were, um, that you broke off. So open up the handle, let it fall out, put that in your metal recycle. So then I'm just gonna work my way around this lid and put pop rivets in as I go. So I like to drill from the inside of this lip right here um, because then I know I can see where the width of this lip is right here. And I know that I'm putting my hole fairly close to the center of that that little piece of metal right there, that thickness. The side that you use the tool on makes a nice flush surface. The side that the um, pop rivet sticks out on, away from the tool, has a little part that sticks out. Later on, we're gonna be opening up the back of this, and this is gonna be a place that we might reach in and do cleaning out. And chances are you're gonna be reaching in and moving your hands around, and I want a minimal amount of things that are gonna stick out and perhaps snag a cloth or somebody's hand. It's pretty common to use four pop rivets, one at the top, bottom, left, and right, and that's pretty secure. I find that when you have pop rivets that are directly across from each other, two points of secure, of, of being secured right across from each other, that creates an axis that goes right across the middle of the lid, and it can kind of pivot on that a little bit. So you're really depending on, you're putting more strain on those individuals on either side. I find that when you have pop rivets that don't go straight across from each other, um, something more like a five-pointed star, um, then you get a lot more stability that way. And normally you've got a triangle on a number of different places supporting things. So I basically like to use five. Um, here I've got one in the bottom, one on either side, and one um, off center on the top on either side. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So we've cut off the bottom of our stovepipe at a 45 degree angle. It doesn't have to be exactly 45 degrees, but the big thing that you want is that when you've got your stovepipe, if you put it down against the bottom of the barrel um, or against the ground, you don't want it completely blocking the draft. Like if I put it down on the ground right here, you can see that no air is gonna be able to get in. Whereas if I flip it over and I've got this 45 degree cut, when I put it down on the ground, it's got all of this space right down here that all of the draft can come through. So no matter how far down you stuff it, you're not gonna be blocking the draft off. That's the reason for the 45. Um, when you put the 45 in, try and make sure that, that um, the cut that you have is oriented towards the back door. Um, 
I think, I believe that that helps to keep the hot gases more close to the back of the oven. Also, it means that if you ever get any sort of a clog, or you want to clean that out, you're going to be able to access it from that back door. Once you start pushing through that spot, um, that hole that we made for it, where we used the ball peen hammer to knock this out, it's going to be a pretty tight fit. It's not easy to rotate and pivot it. So try and get the orientation right the first time. Um, and when you're putting it in, you may find that you need to expand that hole just a little bit, um, and that's not a problem. But 